old school Wolfgang. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's it. Showing my age there. Yeah. Oh, I got my, my laptop. I got three freaking books. I got it on. Let's see. Uh, Lincoln. My Obama book. Mm. And um, Andrew Jackson. <laughs> Andrew Jackson. Really? Yeah. I'm sorry. Was it Andrew Jackson? Or is it? No, it's Hamilton. I'm sorry. Yeah, still, same yeah. time period. Lincoln and Andrew's about 2,000 pages combined. So Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, if you ever go to prison, make sure you bring that book with you. Oh, I, I, I sure will. Trust me. Yeah. yeah. The goal is not to go to prison. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least for today. At least for today, yeah. If it's necessary, then of course I will have to do what I need to do. If I was to become like the next Nelson Mandela, then yeah, I'll do what I have to do. Okay. You know? The so. white version of Nelson Mandela. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, screw it, why not? Yeah. Dude, so this is what this is what Giant Omar presents and Blaine the family kind of just meeting up Morphed. right now. Morphed? Yeah, it's just kind of like, you know, sinking together. Yeah. So I like this. Um, take it away, Tommy. Well, I think this being our first episode trying to build, we don't know what. Yeah, we're trying to figure shit out. We are. In times like these. And, and I guess we can tell the listeners the backstory is that, you know, Johnny said, hey, let's put some together. And I said, all right. And so here we are going to yeah. attempt to put some together. But, you know, how about this? Tell us about Johnny Nomad Presents. What is that podcast all about? So Johnny Nomad Presents it pretty much is, is telling people stories, whether you're a hip-hop artist to a sex therapist to an entrepreneur. Um, and I speak to people who are really in the beginning stages of the entrepreneurship or stardom. And I, I seem to be more intrigued with people starting than when they're at their pinnacle. Right, um, I think we tend to get enough um, data from those people at the pinnacle, but we never get enough data from people who are starting. Right, you know. So just to see how people kind of maneuver and pivot on hard times, especially times like this right now. Right, you know how you and I are pivoting together right now. Um, so that's pretty much what Johnny Nomad presents. I'm presenting these wonderful stories from around the world. I speak to people from around the world. I had a few people, actually I have a good friend of mine. He's in Spain right now. I wanted to try to get in touch with him, see how he's doing over there. I have another person that's in Canada. I want to speak to, I have a couple of people in Kuwait. I'm going to speak to as well, just to see how they're faring. Um, and just speak about what's going on worldwide and try and get that global feel. So I'm going to, going to be doing that pretty soon. i um, going to be reaching out and seeing what people are available that, Right now, people are not as, as, even though people are at home, they're not as available as you think, just because, you know, they take care of their families. Exactly. Um, and trying to get quiet space to speak. Uh, Let me tell you right yeah. now, right now, I'm actually in my wife's office, which is also the classroom. <laughs> Luckily today, she, she told me that today was a teacher work day. So the kids <laughs> are off from school. If it wasn't for this, I'll be doing it on my, on my iPhone in my car. So, which, oh, which, right. You said you were going to do it from your car. Yeah. Well, I was lucky enough that she told me, you know, she should work there this morning. So I said, oh, great, I can do it here. Yeah. But going in the future, it may be in my car on my, on my iPhone. So if the party is shitty, um, blame Tommy. But um, <laughs> so that's pretty much it. That's, that's what Johnny Nomad presents. I always wanted to, my podcast kind of evolved from doing a generic kind of podcast to doing more of an interviewing of people and getting real stories out, not fluff. Not very topical. Uh, it was it was more about my interest, what what I found interesting, and mm-hmm. I just put that out there. I do have a miniature kind of docu coming out um, about this person doing real estate, and I'm actually putting that together, and that's going to be on YouTube. It's not going to be a podcast. It's just too much content to put as a podcast, and the way I'm going to cut it, it it's going to be kind of back and forth. So you you if it's audio, you may get lost. Um, if it's with the visual, you, you'll get to see the visual, the back and forthness of it. Okay. So that's going to be a kind of a special treat for everyone coming on YouTube pretty soon. Um, I'll announce the date for that on my IG account. Johnny Nomad oh, presents. How, uh, how close are you to launching that? I would say probably by another week. By another week, okay. editing, 
it's it's a lot of content to edit. Um, and just kind of my first baby of doing such. So I'm trying to, you know, I'm almost do being too much of a perfectionist to be honest with you. Um, how long is it? Or oh, it's, a, it? it's long. That's why, that's why it's called editing, right? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know yet. I'm really, I'm really getting the hard edit done first and then we're going to re-edit it again. Um, it may be an hour or I may do 30 minute bits. Not sure yet. I may, I may break it up to separate series or like maybe a mini series of it mm. and, um, and go from there with it. I'm not sure yet. I just got, once I see the final edit, then I'll determine if it's too long to go ahead and do um, a multiple kind of a series, maybe a two part or a three part or type of thing. So. Can you give us a little backstory? Um, yeah, this person um, is in real estate um, and young guy, he's actually a, uh, used to be a pharmacist and he didn't like his job anymore. He didn't want to be a pharmacist, didn't, work, didn't want to work the long hours, wanted to control his livelihood on his own. Young man, uh, mid-30s, and he was like, screw it, I'm going to go into real estate. And he's been doing it for the past few years, and he's been successful at it. Where He has a couple of VAs. VA stands for virtual assistants. Um, and um, it's just him, I think maybe two or three virtual assistants himself. He's keeping it small. But he's making bank. He has a couple. He has a partner. Whenever he wants to decide to get on some bigger ventures, things like that. And sometimes he does things on his own as well. So it just depends on the circumstance. And um, he's been gracious enough to assist me with my ventures. I started up a company as well called Nine. <clears throat> excuse me. I started up an investment in the company as well this year called Nine Ventures Investments. And the Nine Ventures Investments stands for my nine kids. So ah. that's where the Nine Ventures come from. So NVI, all right. So, um, and I've been, he's been, he's been pretty much my mentor teaching me about real estate and uh, it's not traditional real estate agent work. It's more on the wholesaling side and, um, rent to own and to get, you know, that, that monthly, what they call, you know, uh, those, uh, money in the mail checks, you know, so that mail money. <laughs> so, so is the documentary about him and his, well, pretty much is about this one this, Yes, exactly. So it's about this one house that, that he uh, went ahead and purchased. He tells the story about it. I sit down and interview him inside the home. He actually goes through the, each room as far as what needs to be done, how it needs to be done. And he, he discusses about you know how um, he's done it and what you can do as well and how he did this virtually with no money of his own. So um, he gives some good tips and tidbits. So documentary slash more informational piece, you know, um, and uh, this will be the first one of that kind. I've had an in-person interview of that that kind of uh, kind of situation where I've actually was on site recording. So I had my son helping me with that, and he was a horrible cameraman. So um, I had to, I'd fire him then. Yeah, I did fire him. Um, no, he did. Turn out the will. Turn out the will as well. No, he did really good actually. Um, <laughs> I was really impressed with what he did with the camera work. So he was. He's in a, He needs more practice, but we're gonna get it down together. And um, it was fun. So, it really was so fun. Is this, this is maybe a how-to documentary on flipping a house? Pretty much. Well, yes. So for this one, he's actually going to be uh, uh, holding and renting. So it's gonna be, uh, he's going to sit on it and rent it out to, to maybe corporate entities. He may do a Airbnb to it or if not, just a regular kind of rental piece. Okay. Um, but he is you not know, fixing it up because it looks dated. So he's doing minimal work. He's not like, you know, doing a kind of a HGTV type of, right. you know, gutting and then redoing everything. A lot of people don't do those as much as people think they do. Um, a lot of people still do those, but more, 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 a lot more people are doing less kind of more cosmetic stuff. So if it's an older home, they're not trying to knock down walls. They're not trying to put another beam up to give you open space. They're like, you know what? I'll give you some granite countertop. Then I'm going to paint your cabinetry. I'll right. give you some new appliances. I'll give you some new flooring. And think about it. In the future, a room's going to be square anyway, right? Yeah. So a room's a room's a room. So you just paint the room or you paint the home a different color or the most current color that, it, that there is. If you have an outside brown brick home, most of the time they're going to paint it white and then paint your window frames black. That's like the new thing going on. Oh, really? Um, yeah, especially in the South. That's the newest thing right now. So black window frames, a white brick front, no more of that brown brick. And if you have a step, still give this kind of cedar kind of posting with rods in it to make it look even more fresh to it. Um, 
the mailboxes are looking kind of different where they come with like a mini fence with the large numbers. So they, they're doing different things right now just to spice things up. So we're looking kind of a little different. Um, but most people are not gutting homes anymore. They're just kind of, you know, if it's in decent shape, the bones are there. Just deal with it. Well, I, and I, and I'm just guessing here because uh, my wife and I ran into uh, somebody I know at the grocery store who's also in the, um, same field of the um, real estate. And he was talking about how right now uh, people uh, are backing out of contracts because. Yes. Because of the situation. Don't know. You don't, exactly. You don't yeah. know what's going to happen, you know, not week to week, but day to day. Correct. So this is, there's that, this is that, that instance to where even if you're a landlord, and you can't evict somebody right now, depending on what state or city you're in. Exactly. To a point to where you may not be able to collect any monies. Mm-hmm. And depending where you're at in your investments, you may be depending on that income. That yeah. may be your only source of income. Um, if that is so, then that means you're, you're shit out of luck as well, right? If you're someone who has a little more money, a little more stable, you saved some, then you may be okay. You may be able to withstand that. I've even seen on Facebook to where some landlords said they're, they're kind of forgiving the rents and they're not going to charge their, 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 their tenants not until May. Right. Um, if you're that nice of a landlord, wow. I think I would do something like that. I'm not sure how long I'll be able to do it for. Yeah. But definitely I would check on my tenants, say, Hey, let's kind of pull our resources together. I'm not going to charge you rent. Just don't fuck up the place. No, we're going to start. Here's an email stating when I'm not going to charge you rent and when I'm going to start back again, mm-hmm. just to make sure that people understand, Hey, this is a still a contractual thing that we have here. You know, it's great to be nice and all, but again, you still have to make money. Well, I mean, even look at, you know, small businesses right now that have to shut down because they can't afford, you know, the square footage. And unfortunately, you know, a small business can be a backbone of a, of a town. And so it's, Absolutely. It's, it's a different world right now. No, it is. In every state, every city is different right now, which kind of sucks where, there is no uniform thing happening with what's, what's going on. So in my state, I'm in, in Georgia, I'm in Atlanta, um, pretty much the mayor of Atlanta has said you know, every restaurant, bar, and any type of social place is closed, right? right. So traffic around here has been a quarter of compared to what it used to be, um, which is great. People are listening. But then they just recently closed the parks because people were going to the parks. It makes no fucking sense. Yeah. My kids to the damn park. That, that defeats the whole purpose. Um, but we do have, you know, playtime with them. We bought sidewalk chalk and we bought board games, I told you. And we did other things. We bought jump ropes and, and hula hoops. And we've gone outside for walks and stuff like that just to get them going. We're still in our little kind of containment of a group. Um, no play dates. That makes no, again, that makes no damn sense. Um, but Well, I mean, it does because, you, because the younger kids can have the virus. It might, they might not show signs, but then they can... Right. Give it to the adults. So that that somewhat makes sense. But the problem is we, I don't know, I don't think there's enough data right now to really support a lot of what's going on. And and personally, not to, not to get on a political high horse, I just don't think uh, our government has been transparent enough to, to really let us know what's going on. So yeah, I agree with that. There's it's been- it's it's rough right now. I mean, um, you, like you're saying, the kids you know are somewhat confined. They don't get to the, the opportunities to see their friends as much, or yeah. uh, or us adults can't really go out and go linger around with our adult friends. So it's right. it's it's just strange. Just this whole virus thing. No, it is. It's, no, it's, it's new to everyone, right? Especially when our economy is so strong, right? And now it kind of is going down, but that's because of what's going on. I think we'll rebound. Honestly, I think we do. Mm-hmm. We will. Um, I'm not sure if we'll operate in the same way. People are weird, and we're kind of resilient, you know what I'm saying? We're, I know when I was in 9-11 for New York, it's not the same as the virus, but in New York, you know, it, it shut down for about a week or two. It got very weird, very strange. And before you know it, people were cursing at each other, sticking middle fingers up at one another. We got back to being New Yorkers, right? Yeah. 
Um, this is different. You know, now you see people sneezing and coughing, you know, you're like, um, back the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like at least ten feet. Yeah, at least ten feet. Yeah. You know, as Americans, do we adopt the Japanese way of doing things? How they greet each other? They just bow. They don't shake. They don't touch each other's hands. You know. Oh, elbow, elbow, elbow. elbow. Like, are, are, is that going to be the new way of doing things? No, we should, well, we're going to be learning and, and doing different things. I don't think it's going to be the last time. It's not like this happens. We're seven billion people, about to be nine billion, and maybe a decade or less. It, it something's gonna come from that. All that shit and piss is gonna mix, and we're gonna get this again, right? So, as far as are we ready to handle it? Obviously, no, we're not, right? So, the federal government is allowing the states to handle it. The states are allowing the freaking mayors to handle it, and from the counties to the cities, everyone's waiting for all this individual layering of what to do, and no one knows what the fuck to do. Well, I was in a week ago. I was in California. And I had just happened to flip on uh, the news because I had just come from work and I went back to the hotel and I just, I just needed some, something to decompress. So I was looking for a little bit of humor and I just happened to land on, I think it was MSNBC and they're talking about how the state of California was getting ready to shut down. I'm like, huh? And I called the airlines. I got the f- next flight out the next morning to get the fuck out of Dodge because I did not want to be trapped in you know, yeah. another state. And at the same time, uh, you and I talked about this when we were talking about putting this together. I'm driving to the airport in tears because I'm having a panic attack going, what the fuck is going on right now? And so it's it, it's something that, you know, as – as adults, as parents, you know, this is where we have to be transparent with our kids and let them know we don't have all the answers. This is something new. I mean, the last time we had anything close to this really was like 1918 and 1919 with the the Spanish flu. Yeah. So this is, this is, you know, new territory for parents. I mean, I just posted right before you and I were talking, I just posted on on LinkedIn and on Medium, you know, I feel jealous for parents such as you, Johnny, because I don't have the opportunity to sit here with my kids, even though um, two of my bonus daughters are here. But, uh, it, you know, I, I want my son here to be a part of this chaos as well. Right. And so, you know, watching uh, a little bit of uh, morning news uh, shows of you know the parents are home working the kids are right next to them being yeah. being schooled I don't know if my stress level would handle it but I want to be a part of that and so I I had to write something about it so I'm a little bit jealous of the fact that you know parents such as you get these opportunities because it's it's you're creating memories right now good or bad or indifferent yeah. you're creating I said, memories I gotta give the credit also to lovely who's my wife and um she's she's done everything i haven't done shit <laughs> so, but there's be a pain to ask for her even more uh, i'm, I'm kind of like the the six jackson she's so, just, <laughs> <laughs> you're tito i'm tito right so she's but she did she has done fantastic she's like i said she's created a whole area for them you know we're using a living room our, our, her office and the living rooms adjacent to each other so as our kitchen we have an open plan so she's kind of you know we have the, the middle schooler on one side the twins are in the same grade, so that kind of helps out. Mm-hmm. And um, she's going over with them. Then she has them do a PE because that's what the curriculum calls for that they've given to her. And we had to go buy a fucking shitload of ink because there was a whole – this whole week is nothing but PDFs. Last right. week was all digital. This week – and we had to get, get paper and ink, and that's that's another cost we weren't expecting. But to say all that, I think the work environment is going to change for parents who are at home. And like to your point, you know what, damn, I got to spend time with my kids. I don't want this to change anymore. And companies are going to switch up. I know a lot of companies who are kind of staying away or even moving away from people working at home. And they were going back to the whole, let's have this open space, work environment, warm desk type environment. No one's going to have a cubicle anymore. Just right. pick where you want to sit. But we have the capability to work from home. You know, we have what we're using, Zoom right now. I've yeah. been using Zoom for over a year and a half, two years now for my podcast. Um, and it works, 
it can work. Now, I do think these computers need to get better with these freaking cameras. These cameras fucking suck, right? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so, so Apple, hope you're freaking listening. Update the goddamn cameras. Um, but, you know, <laughs> things like that, microphones, like people are going to find ways to work from home. Um, and they're gonna, they, you might find out more people to sign, stay at home, find something different than going back to work. Of course, they're going to go back to work and need the job, need the money. But in the long run, people may change up their plan of how they operate or how they're going to. Um, well, I told my boss, uh, because I do 100% travel for work, I told my boss, I, I want to stay grounded. I don't want, I don't want to go back on the road. I want to, I want to be working from home. And she essentially told me, uh, you're probably going to be home for two weeks and you're back out. And I'm like, I really don't want to. And this is for me, uh, a, a huge eye opener of going, all right, I got to get my shit together and, and, you know, either find something where I can work from home or, you know, get that entrepreneurial uh, fire under my ass and go, all right, let's get this moving. Because like I said, Johnny, I, w- I want to be home. I enjoy doing this. I enjoy, you know, um, what did I do yesterday? Oh, yesterday I, I um, edited, uh, one of the latest uh, podcasts I have that's going to will come up and I booked like four more guests um, for the next two weeks to, to get more content out there. And so I like being home. Um, Is, is, is this going to be permanent? I hope, but like I said, I, I still have a dreaded day job that, and I need the paycheck. And so we'll see. I mean, I agree that uh, what you're like, uh, who, oh, Yahoo, years ago, uh, Yahoo had majority of their employees working from home. And then uh, Marissa Meyer said, no more, you have to come to an office. And it's like, now we're reverse engineering and going, nope, go back home, go back yeah. home. Yeah, definitely so. And listen, there's some jobs you just can't do from home. That's obvious. It's mm-hmm. always be that way, and that's fine. Um, and companies, I guess, having an issue with you know, I guess, keeping up with their their staff and performance and things of that nature, right? I think you're going to be at home, going to jerk off a lot more, or whatever. Um, well, there's a there's a um, company, a video conference company. Oh, what was it called? I want to say like Sneak, and the way they operate is. Um, so if your company uses this video platform, if you get up to go take an extended period of time to go watch the Brady Bunch for an hour or two, right? it's constantly uh, taking pictures of you. So if you're not there, it's I'm sure there's a trigger that telling your company, your boss saying, hey, Bobby's not at his desk. Where is he? And so... You know, it right now it's the honor system, really. I mean, for me, uh, as I look over, oh, there's my work computer, and I need to be doing stuff. But I'm just like, well, technically, I just remember, tech, I'm on PTO right now. Yeah, you're on vacation, dude. So you I'm, I'm, I'm on vacation. I really am. So, yeah. so, but I still feel guilty. And I have my work phone right here, and there's nothing, no email. Yay, that's awesome. But I think, you know what? I think as Americans, though. We've we've kind of taken the vacation and sick time and made it into a bad thing. If uh, you're sick yeah. And you tell your boss you're sick, you know, they, by law they can't tell you, you can't, you know, you cannot take it. Mm-hmm. But they make you feel like shit as far as saying, oh, you're sick again? Or, mm-hmm. or what do you have this time? Or, yeah. you know, it's not, it's, we have a bad culture around that. Even my vacation time is almost like a weakness. You're taking a vacation again. But you don't like your job, um, you know. Around the world, we have the the least amount of vacation days. Yeah, what is fucking you no know, fourteen days or just two weeks vacation? Yeah, that's nothing to give yourself a break. You know, you you you're working like a dog. You're overwhelmed. You're burnt out, and then and then also you, you only can take vacation throughout the time of the year that they designate because there might be blackout times. Yep. Right. So it's like when I don't want to go on vacation in February. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so I think that culture has to change. I think the younger generation is definitely making moves like that. They're changing it. They're, they're just kind of simulating Europe and mm-hmm. that endeavor. 
especially with the new tech companies, they give you almost God's amount of time off or um, relaxation or just different things you can do in the office or be some place different to work within the office confines. You don't have to be in the actual office or a cubicle. I think our generation is still holding on to that old school mentality of if you're not working 70 hours, hours a week, then you're not productive. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny you say that because um, the, the company I work for, not only, not only do you have to, we have two systems. We have to keep track of our time. And my, my boss, my manager sent out an email saying, some of you didn't work 40 hours. Okay. We're salary. Get, right. get over it. There are weeks that we're working over 40 hours. Where's the email there saying, oh, hold on. You worked over 40 hours. Take some time for yourself. Nope. It's yeah. the, you didn't work 40 hours. Bullshit. And, it's, and, and you're right, Johnny, because we, we Americans have this, we think having a strong work ethic is the key, but it's, you have to take time for yourself. I mean, my, my wife put it brilliantly and she said with, with this coronavirus, we're now taking a step back, realizing we need to slow down. Mm -hmm. We need to take a step back and just really slow the fuck down. And I think now with, you know, for example, uh, the state of New York and California, for example, where you're quarantined, you're in the mm -hmm. home. And I think that's a good thing because I think it's now it's a realization that, okay, I need to chill and it's good. It's good to just again, decompress and just figure out what the next step is, but don't be so rushed to try and figure it out. Right. I think a lot of creativity is going to come out of this. Mm -hmm. you know, when people are in a corner, you got to figure shit out. So I think, we're going to see a lot of births coming from this, uh, you know, physical births that a lot of people want to be fucking. So nine months from now, there's going to be a lot of babies born. Yeah. yeah. yeah but um, on top of that, the creative side, business, entrepreneurship, we're going to see a lot of, of, hopefully a lot of good stuff coming from it. Um, and I think that, you know, like I said, we're going to bounce back. I, it's, it is serious. I think people should take it serious. If it wasn't, the whole world wouldn't be involved. Exactly. Right. Um, it may not be as prevalent in, in your neighborhood, right? Doctor, every state's going to be different. Some have less, some have more. Like you said, California, New York, coastal regions, they're fucked, right? Yeah. Washington was worse at one point. New All York right, is taking over, state, yep. right? So right now my state every day has been getting worse and worse because now they're, they're freaking testing. And now counties and cities are closing stuff down. So by next week, I was probably say, most of Metro Atlanta is going to probably be closed down, if not already, by the end of this week. I still think we have another couple more weeks of this. I don't, I don't think by April 1st, you're going to say, hey, open the economy up, because then look what's happening to China right now. They opened it up, and people are sick again. Yeah. So they need to get a proper handle on us. So we have to see. Of course, you know, we got to go back to work. You got to do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, they'll have something in the meantime to help people out with it. And quarantining people, once the economy is open, what happens then? Because nobody has 14 days of sick time. Right. You may get six days for the whole entire year, depending who you work for. Or if you work in a warehouse, you get points if you're out. You know, so how does that work? You know what I'm saying? So the job sector is not going to pivot to compensate for this once the economy opens back up again. Mm -hmm. So if I have coronavirus and I don't have vacation time, am I shit out of luck? Am I missing two weeks of pay? These are questions that need to be answered. Right. You know, this is a different world now. How do you some type of mandate going on? I, I personally, like for our company, they already told us, if you get it, don't, don't stress about, well, let me take a step back. Our company is switching over to a different type of vacation. It's more of the honor system. So like I said, I'm, we're switching over as of the end of this month. And so I still have my PTO and I'm like, I'm going to use my PTO. And then going forward, it is, it, it's no longer, um, you know, how every paycheck you accumulate so many. Yeah, exactly. 
no more. Um, it's I don't know if it's going to be a free for all, but I think, like you were saying earlier, I I want this to be a good thing where if my coworkers just are feeling mentally they need a break, that they don't have to go. Oh, I don't. I, I need to still save up my my time for the end of the year. Correct. Versus, I have that time. I can go take that time. I can go say to my boss, I need I need a break. And I'm hoping that with this different way of uh, um, taking vacation time, that this will be a precedent for other companies to say, if you're having a bad day, go home. No I questions should, asked. I should refer to that company. I'm not going to say the name. Um, it was a competitor of Uber. <laughs> 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 and um, I had unlimited vacation time. Or just in a holiday time, and then paternity leave. If you had, you know, had to, if you had a baby, uh, our paternity leave for ma- for males were up to eighteen weeks. Wow! Um, so they were really about. I gotta, I gotta say, they were really about um, taking care of their their team members, and you know, people would go take vacations, and it wasn't all the time as you think it would be. Because when the thing is that when when you know you have the time, you tend to work harder anyway. Because you're like, no, I can take it off whenever I want to now. When you when you're strict with it, you, you, you try to you try to make any excuse just to take time off anyway because right. you're burnt out and you're trying to use a lot of people. A lot of times people take their sick time as vacation time because that I know I'm not going to lose it. Sometimes it doesn't roll over, right. right? So they'll call out sick. You know, of course, HR may want a, a doctor's note. People are forging doctor's notes left and right. You know, <laughs> that's easy on Google, right? Um, but I, I think to your point, I think. For an older company doing that now, it may be a culture shock in the beginning. They may have a, a, a kind of a mad dash, everyone jumping at one time, taking vacation. But also, it depends on your department. If Sally and Robert is out, obviously, you, sh- you can't take it, Tommy. Right. You know, what's fair is fair. You take it next month. You know, I had people taking vacation every other month. And they would take it for a week. Sometimes I had a, a coworker who went to Japan for two weeks. <laughs> and uh, I never was able to take a two-week vacation ever in my career yeah it was after my my couple my five days seven days whatever you, you combine it with your days off so you get seven days right yeah and then you come back and you're like shit okay but you don't, don't get to be here i don't want to be back. here I'm, I'm back you know so um it's different when you have that where you have people just understanding and people are not taking advantage of it and the people who do take advantage of it they would get terminated yeah it's just that easy you know if you're performing well and you say hey after this project on the 13th, I'm, you know, starting my vacation. Who's going to say no? Mm-hmm. You know, it's all about time. I, I, you, know, you know as well when it's busy time for your business. You know when it's the peak season. You know what makes sense. You know what's on your plate. So it makes no sense for you to try to run out of Dodge when, you know, this is the peak time of the business and everything relies on you. You know, we, we, all, we all have to be adults as well with, with our expectation as well, right? And I think, like I said, we have a few people that's going to take advantage of it. Not many. People will learn how to use it. It's a new thing. But to have that availability of it, and if the wife says, hey, next month I'm going to go somewhere, you can say, oh, no doubt about it. I mean, I'll put it yeah. in right now. Let's, let's fucking do it. Yep. Instead of saying, hey, why don't we save it to June? You know, and you have about five days left. Yeah. And you're saving it, it for yeah. this one time of year. Instead of just saying, hey, let's up and go. Yeah, let's, let's, let's go cross country next, next month, this week. You know, it's the, having that freedom that changes your mindset a thousand percent. So what would, what would one tip, what would one piece of advice you want to give out Johnny and to, to the people who are watching this, to the people who are listening to this, as far as a positive message, as far as how can, how can we, um, because again, we're coming together because we felt that, we just wanted to, to do something collaboratively, if I can speak English. But at the same time, what can we offer somebody right now, some, something positive um, to help them moving forward with the way the world is, is going right now? The idea that you have, go after it. That dream that you had yesterday or 10 years ago, 
now you have the time to execute on it. Go after your shit. Make, make it happen. Um, the time is now. There's no excuse right now, right? Whether you got laid off, whether you just quarantine your next 14 days off your job, whether you're on vacation like yourself, now is the time to take advantage of that time and start something. Get a fire under your ass and get, get it going. This is the time you really want to change your, not just your life, but your family's. And go after it. Don't worry about the money. Don't worry about the money. Just get shit started. Things, you will figure things out. If you really want to make things happen, things will fall into place. You will make things happen. And if you have to sacrifice a little bit here and there, you do such. But take, use this time wisely, man. That's why I've been contemplating and figuring things out, like I said, with you. you know, And it's like, what do we do next? Right. How am I going to attack this, this span of time on top of having family time? on top of being engaged with the family, not being disengaged, but also doing what I want to do at the same time and not feeling bad about leaving my family aside, right? Because you also have that variable too, right? People with their families, but then you want to work on themselves. They feel almost like it's almost too selfish. You have to be. If you really want to have more time with your family, you're going to have to do something in return to garner those funds so you can have more fun with them. So right now, go after your dream. Plug away at it. Tell people, don't tell people. I don't care which method you want to go with. Mm -hmm. Just go after it. Just fucking do it and take that step. That's it. Awesome. Well, this was a lot of fun. It was. We're going to do this again, like maybe tomorrow? That sounds great. Let's do it tomorrow. Let's see what else we can come up with. Exactly. We'll, we'll come up with some, some, maybe some segment pieces, guys, and, um, and uh, we'll get this more formatted for you guys. But this was definitely just kind of, hey, let's put something together. Let's get out there and make this it happen. We'll see, we'll see where it goes from here. Yeah. Maybe it needs to argue a little bit. Maybe we need to have like some opposing opinions. We can't always agree for shit. You know what I'm saying? New York pizza sucks. Chicago pizza is the best. Chicago pizza is not even pizza. That's like a fucking meal. What are you talking about? Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, you're in Colorado. But anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk. I'm in Atlanta. I'm from New York. <laughs> <laughs> We will find something we can oppose on. There you go. And we'll give our two our two senses. And um, we'll see what we can do. Come up with some fun stuff for you guys. I agree. Awesome. So you guys, you can find this on Tommy's platform, which is Tommy. Blendingthefamily.com. And you will also find it on Giant Nomad Presents. We're going to be sharing the content together. And like I said, whatever comes out of this, then we're going to make, form something new. We'll see. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. But but uh, we're definitely gonna get this again tomorrow. Let's um, let's talk. And tomorrow, maybe in my car. Maybe we we'll just make a fun day out of it. Every time we do this, I may be someplace different. <laughs> I could be on a walk. Yeah. I get out of the house. I didn't get out of the house at all yesterday. So maybe I'll be on a walk when we're doing this. So that sounds. No, Who I'm, knows? I may I may challenge you today. Maybe we we'll both be on walks. Okay. Like, oh, that sounds fantastic. All right. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right. Over now.